Welcome to a whole new series that I decided to call Tutoring Session, where you're here, or should I say your stuff is here, because you want to get better, and I'm here to, well, tutor you. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Now, first things first, the person who asked to give a comment on this specifically asked for a color advice. So uh, we're not going to jump into any sort of anatomy or posing or composition or anything like that. So we're just going to uh, help figure out what kind of color advice does he want. Now, during the conversation, he told me that he just wants some shading advice and says that this example image has a bit of a problem that he can't really pinpoint how to actually improve. Now, right out of the bat, I can already tell by just uh, going over all the color selection here that he did not actually change the hue or basically it's saying that this is the shading is very monochrome. Now, if you were to take a look at the upper left corner here where uh, the colors are shown, you will realize that now A, there, the whole color wheel as in this bar never left the same hue. Now, now check if I go to the lighter color, which is here, the brighter color, it is in here. And if I go to a darker color, it's also about the same. Now, we don't want that because as I've shown in a lot of other videos, you want to keep your shading as not monochrome as possible, as uh, I'm gonna show you an example here. As you can see, the lighting to shading always shifts. Now, depending on your light source, this might vary, but the idea is you don't want it to be monochrome because if you do make it monochrome, it will look really, really well bad. Now, that's number one, which means in this case, what he should have done is to first pick a color. Uh, let's say I want to pick this color as the midtone. Mm, I'm not sure. Let's just lay, lay down the color that he decided to use. And this is the colors that he decided to use at the end. Now let's check if there's difference. Now, as you can see, I'm pretty sure anyone with a basic sense of color or at least somewhat of a sense of color would understand that there's a problem like this is like I said before, it's the same hue. And worst of all, it is simply going up and down. And this is even worse because at the very least, you want to make sure that your lighting, as in your brighter parts, should be going to top left and your shadow should be just going uh, bottom right. You don't want to go all the way down because all you're doing is just making shadow black. And as we've seen a lot of images, black shadow is horrible. You want a slightly sort of a bluer or uh, purple-ish shadow. So let's fix that, shall we? So let's first, uh, well, in here, since it's a Luna, we know that it's sort of a dark blue color. So it's about this color, right? So let's just reuse this color because, well, it seems to be all right. Now let's try to find a suitable uh, brighter color. And in this case, what we would want to do is do this. Now we go to the slightly left and up and then change the hue a bit. Now, don't worry about the color being uh, too extreme yet. All we're just do, all we're doing here is just uh, getting a sort of something that resembles a correct color palette because this is not gonna cut it. So now go to the shadow. Let's switch it a bit to the colder color. Now, in this case, a lot of people might say it's uh, you shouldn't switch any color. Now, in this case, like it, it's up to you, completely up to you because. Uh, the shadow hue is sort of dependent on the light source. So in this case, I'm just going for a bit purple. And so instead of this messy thing that's hardly even accurate, we get, sorry, we get this. Oops, sorry. We get this. Now, I'm just going to try to shade like this portion of it and then see what difference does it make. Now that this is done, uh, for those astute among you would realize that I did two things exactly, actually, but let's forget about that and just compare the before and after. You can clearly see the impact now. So what I did here is very simple. So uh, there are two things, but uh, let's go over the first one. It, it simply, I chose a better color. As you can see, notice this corner here. It's no longer multi-hue. 
sorry, it's sorry. It's it's now multi-hue instead of just monochrome. And once again, we don't want monochrome because that is bad. Remember, monochrome equals bad. Unless you're doing intentional whole monochrome painting, that's a different story. Uh, forget about that. Another thing is I added rim lighting. So it's this uh, rim lighting or background light, whatever you could call it. So what you would notice here if if I hide the layer that I did, uh, he the person did not actually use this. As you can see, it's just light. Well, a lot of people say, well, that doesn't make sense, does it? Like it seems that uh, I am I am like putting a light source like here and going down there, right? So how is there light here? Well, this is sort of real and sort of not real. No, it's gonna take a really, really long session to actually explain in full, but the gist of it is light reflects stuff. And then there's there's no way that anything that's sort of disjointed, as you know, the, uh, the neck doesn't directly connect to it smoothly, which means there's a disconnection here light will be able to reflect and bounce off. And so contrasting with the part that's actually with shadow, which is here, the dark part of here, hold on. Contrasting with this shadow portion, there's going to be a portion of light here that's gonna be reflected and you can actually see it. Now, if you try it in real life, you can sort of see it. Try to put your hand against a dark shadow background and you should see a sort of similar effect. Uh, uh, do keep in mind put some light into it and you'll actually see some amount of light is going to bounce off and then appear at places that doesn't seem to should be able to have shadow again this is sort of physics and light and lastly it's actually this it's hard shadow now now this is a mistake that a lot of new uh, beginner people would actually make is to actually over blend stuff now the whole not having a really dark and correct shadow color does affect it but there's also heavy overblending here. What I mean by that is I put a very clear indication on where the shadow ends and where the light starts. And for some reason, it looks better. Now that is because in real life, and I'll show you here, this is how shadow works. If it's a form shadow, as you can see, it's a very, very gradual, I'd say. like. As you can see, the, the blending here is really soft. And yet, if you were to put a close object, like it casts a shadow, as you can see, it's hard, but then it turns soft as the edge goes over. And well, this is the light source. As you can see, there's a desk lamp here. And well, I guess you, I guess you can just tell it by the image. And in this situation here, if let's say the light is here, what would happen? The shadow here is cast by the chin. In this case, this should be a hard shadow instead of soft shadow, which in this case he did. Well, it would be completely fine to leave a soft shadow here. And let's go to the next part, which I noticed, which is the muzzle now. And as you can see, as I zoom out, it's really hard to tell the muzzle apart from the face. And it's, especially if I do this, all of a sudden, whoa, it's a pony without a mouth or a muzzle. So let's fix that, shall we? So here, it's really simple. There's two mistakes, actually no, three mistakes made here. Number one, there's no contrast. As you can see, there's supposed to be shadow here, which is really, really minute. Again, I have to zoom in in order to even see it. And even with zooming in, there's basically no color difference. See, see this part? Now we don't want that. Now let's just add our own shadow in here then. See, this is much better. Uh, now comes to the next part which is actually defining the shape. Now, some people might say it, it could be an anatomy mistake or what, but it's actually not the case. Now, this could be an anatomy mistake, but the reason it looks anatomically, anatomically wrong is because the way he shades, he shaded this nose is like he's shading a 2D object. Now, take a look at this. What he's doing is simply put anything that's upper left as bright color, lower right as shadow and that's not how it works so if let's say our light source is here we don't mean the light source is here in a 2d space what we mean is a light source is about here and going outside of the paper which is probably where luna's looking at which is not in the same plane so what will happen is light will actually reflect like this it will be slightly in the front which means it looks something like this
And as you can see, 3D shape is made. Now, once again, we're going to add a little bit, just a bit of rim lighting here, because once again, it's going to be shadow. We have to show somewhat of a contrast and bam, it looks much better. And that's about the amount of mistake that I can spot. Now, uh, I don't mean like uh, this is the only mistake that he made. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, in terms of like the example that I pick, which is about this this region, I can find this mistake. So now let's just summarize the entire thing. Now, first thing, you use the same hue of color, which you really shouldn't be doing because again, monochrome is really bad. I'm using the colors that you use. As you can see, there's really not much of a contrast going on here. And so what we did here is actually use a more fitting color. Now, pay attention to the top right, sorry, top left. It's really important. This is right. This is the wrong way of doing it. And then it's about contrast. Again, that can be solved if you choose to color correctly. Then hard shadow. Remember, any cast shadow, at least in a close uh, region, should be hard because physics which means uh, another example would be here, it sh the shadow should be hard instead of soft. See, uh, just by doing that, it looks way more sense and way better already. And lastly is to actually show 3D shape. I mean, just look at this. This is not 3D, this is very 2D. And here instantly it becomes 3D. And rim lighting also helps in 3D effect. So. I hope President Dog learned something, as well as the viewer you learned something. And as always, like if you liked the video, comment down below on what else you actually noticed that I might have missed on this thing in terms of color. Remember, subscribe if you want to see more of these kind of content. And last but not least, have fun drawing.